So this is the hidden truth about the war. And this is where his trail ends as well. The impact of the seven nuclear detonations on the world's psyche was great. Those who witnessed the carnage went on to organize a global arms reduction. Perhaps they were admonishing themselves. Furthermore, the existence of V2 was concealed. The events that occurred after the war faded from people's memories, and these men were also sealed away from history. Maybe this was one path to achieve peace. And here the curtain falls on this story. However, that does not mean their own stories came to an end. I fly under the code of knighthood. It's no surprise since we soldiers are the descendants of the Belkin Knights. We protect the meek and give our lives for honor, but that does not mean that we are generous, since generosity will cost us our lives. If the pilot survived to the end of the war, he must have carried out these rules. I bailed out and landed here. The captain was gone. I've lived a comfortable life since then, and I probably have him to thank for that. They ring the bells here at dusk to honor the liberation of the capital. It signals peace, but to me, they are the sounds of death. Hatred cannot be the only motivation for war. It only brings about more pointless deaths. I lost most of my students. They're all my children, my flesh and blood. I will never overcome that grief. I'll probably never teach anyone again. Nor will I ever go up in the sky again. I've entrusted everything I know to a new generation. I'll just look on from here. Marcella Vasquez, the Espada Team's number two and former member of the Sapin Air Force, 9th Air and Land Division, 11th Tactical Fighter Squadron. She is thought to be a survivor of the Coup d'etat squadron. She currently earns a living as a dancer. If the Demon Lord hadn't appeared, our lives might have been different. For me, it wasn't about flying or ideals. Most of all, it was about him, my flight lead. Our mission was to escort the heavy command cruiser that was to act as transportation for the organization. And the Demon Lord appeared, as if to block our path. I will never forget his overwhelming power. One by one, my comrades were shot down, and then the mother bird we were supposed to protect. We survived after the fight. We left our organization and returned to the ground together. But those whose hearts are in the sky will always return to the sky. He was one of them. And so he left, even though his wounds had yet to heal, and he died there, never to return to me. Oh, come on, so a spoiler one still died, but even though I, I neutralized them. Not to interrupt. The and suffering that remained after that battle were also what he had given me. They're among the precious few things he left behind. That's sad. So, and a spy one dies, like, still if you shoot him down, but I neutralized him, he still died? Joshua Pisto. Oh, here we go. Former captain of the Ocean Air Defense Force, 8th Air Division, 32nd Tactical Fighter Squadron. His actions during the Belkin War are surrounded in mystery, and he is rumored to be one of the founders of a world with no boundaries. His whereabouts were unknown after the decisive Battle of Valdrike. 
but several years later he resurfaced as a leader of a terrorist organization. Today he is serving time in prison. This darkness and that little window are my entire world now. I'm actually rather fond of it. The darkness envelops me in a borderless world, a world with no boundaries. He was not the reason we were unable to change the world. No matter what the desired outcome is, the world can still change as long as people expand their knowledge and desire change. Today's world has already changed from what it was back then. Huh. You guys are going to be shocked by this. Larry Fink, also known as Solo Wing Pixie. GOM Team's number two, and member of the Ustio Air Force, 6th Air Division, 66th Air Force Unit. That's right. This man was his buddy, and his enemy. I should have died that day, but I didn't. I dragged my wounded body and reached ground zero of the nuclear detonations. A barren, empty land. I felt an unbearable sadness when I witnessed that landscape. There were still people living there. They were the ones that saved me. It may be true that the world has no need of borders, but would getting rid of them really change anything? The world won't change for the better unless we trust people. Trust is vital in a peaceful world. But that will never happen. I'm still on the battlefield. Right now I'm near a border. I want to see for myself what borders really mean and what their volition really is. I may not find what I'm looking for, but I still want to try. Anyway, that's what I've come to believe, and I think that's enough. Will he see this video? If you do meet him, give him a message for me. Yo, buddy. Still alive? And thanks, friend. See you again. about him, they always had a slight smile on their faces. That, perhaps, may be my answer. Okay guys, so that was Ace Combat Zero, The Belkin War, complete playthrough. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This is one of my um, favorite PlayStation 2 games of all time that I've ever played. I have yet to play other games that people have said are their favorite Ace Combat, such as 5 and 4. Maybe I will order them sometime, I'm not sure. But if I do, I definitely will do possibly a blind playthrough on them. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. All the way up to the end, that was um awesome game. So, um, as for, um, this probably won't be the last Ace Combat Zero video I'll ever do. I still, I'll still probably do a bunch of uh, challenges, and I'm considering if I ever do get the chance to maybe like play through the game on like maybe Ace difficulty and record that. But that would take a while yet. So um, as for now, this is um the end of the the game and uh, it's the end of this playthrough as well. So, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this game. I sure did. And I'll, and I'll see you later.